Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. I am Frankly FM84 and this is season two, episode eight of An Englishman Abroad, where we are out in Indonesia managing Sulok United. So as you can see, we are going to be doing the end of season review in this episode. We are then going to push on forwards, show you all the sign-ins that come in and go out, whether we have improved the squad, the playing staff, the finances, those kinds of things before jumping into a brand new season. Before we do that, though, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and hit the like button to help the channel out. And we are going to jump straight on in to this season review. So in terms of the new arrivals that came into the club, where is our star signing? Let's try and start off there. Uh, a bit jumpy, where's it gone? Okay, so our signing of the season is Gunansar Mandoan. No surprise there, really. He's played 33 games, scoring four goals with two assists. And he really came on in the second half of the season and started to perform very well. Fredjan Wayu is another one who we brought in at the start of the season and has excelled in the team, playing 37 games, scoring six goals with six assists for a 6.88 average rating. Board were actually disappointed with the Mandawan uh, deal. They felt that he gave him too much wages for his place in the squad. Uh, another sign-in was Indra Mustafa, played 33 games, scoring three goals with a 6.81 rating. Coco Araya played 21 games, three substitute appearances, one goal, one assist, and a 6.58 average rating. Quite a few of those players, I mean, we did sign practically a whole new squad, so a lot of them did perform really well. In terms of a season to remember... Uh, we were one of the surprise packages, defying expectations and only largely to an impressive spell of form between April and May that saw us rise to 8th, able to celebrate a successful campaign. So we actually finished 5th, we finished 9 points behind Bali and considering we were relegation fodder at some points in the season, I mean when you look across on the right hand side there and you've got that run of games where we lost to Jakarta, Drew Pasita. Drew with Bali, Drew with PSM, <laughs> lost to Persipura, Jaikora, lost to Mandora United, where did the run end? Okay, and then only did we beat Borneo FC. If we would have got a few more wins out of those games, then we would have been right on the heels of Persija, Persib and Bali. So... Overall, delighted with the way we finished the season. Found that the formation with the Strikerless worked. And I think that that is one that we will be going with going forwards. In terms of the Indonesian Cup, we were knocked out in the quarterfinals by Percy Carbo. That was across the two legs where we lost both of those 1-0. Up until that point, we've been playing well in the Cup. So the board gave us an A-plus for achieving a top half finish and then in the cup we got a C plus because it says that we achieved a top half finish even though it's a cup and we actually got knocked out in the court finals not important um, in terms of our moments to remember our biggest win was a 5-1 win against Persiku where Halmioan, Adrianus, Carabo and Torreira scored goals our match to remember was a 4-0 win against Tira Percy Carbo, where Mandoan, Maran, Mustafa and Rumer were on the score sheet. And our goal of the season went to Maran, running from inside the Persipura half. The striker skins an opponent before scoring a daisy cutter from 20 metres. Now, I'm pretty sure it's a good goal, but it's not, not the goal that I probably would have given us goal of the season because the free kick that was scored in the last episode was probably the one for me. In terms of the finances, the club's reputation is still a one-star national reputation. We have no new sponsorship deals across the year, but our sponsorship in a whole has gone up to 189,000. Our broadcast revenue is up to 109,000. Our corporate and hospitality is 2.57k. Competition prize money is down from last season, 
Match day commercial and retail is up to 1,500. We sold a total merchandise of 1,110 pounds and the non-domestic of that being 111 pounds in total and we look at the lineup so the game hasn't adjusted to our strikerless tactic so it still thinks that we are lining up with Darmawan, Adipawa, Tata, Polly, Rontololo, Bachori, Romare, Pamana, Zola, Moran and Caffey even though I don't think Caffey played any games did he play any games? He played no games in Liga One, but still got into the lineup. So, not too sure how this lineup works. Still think it's a little bit broken, but hey ho, that's the lineup that they reckon. In terms of the accolades, so we were best coach of the month for November. In terms of the player awards, we've got Dharma Wan was fans player of the season, and rightly so, he was fantastic in goal. Young player of the season was Fredjan Wayu. Gunasar Mandawan is signing of the season. Moran was goal of the season. Pamana was top goal scorer with 10. Pamana was also the top assister with 8. Darmawan was most player of the match awards with 7. Also got the highest average rating with 7.2. And Vatual Roman completed the most passes per 90 minutes with 35. In terms of record breakers, Carabo was most goals in a Match by a player of two. Ichwan Torreya was most goals by a player in a league match, which was two. Pamana, most assists in a season for eight. Damawan, player of the match with seven. Tata was in the Naughty Boys list with 12 yellow cards and red. Damawan takes the most league appearances by a player now with 60. Moran, most league goals by a player at 24 and Brew did become the oldest player as I said turning 46 years old with 62 days on the clock and then Ixan was the highest transfer fee received at £12,000 Halmioan was the youngest goal scorer for the club at 21 years and 91 days and Abru was the oldest goal scorer at 45 years and 209 days so in Oh, normally there's a roundup page that tells us how we've got on, but that doesn't seem to actually want to be there. So it says that we've set a, a number of records here, but we've not really played in this division before, so everything will be a record. So we've got a new number of high league defeats. We have a record high finish of fifth. Uh, we have players inducted into the best overall 11. A season review that we've just been through and if we have a quick look at the club vision and expectation meeting before we move on so they want us to sign players under the age of 23 for the first team play attacking football play direct football and play counter-attacking football not sure all three of those work in one formation but we know the formation we're going to go with five-year plan is work within the wage budget minimum of two-year contracts for the first team players and one-year contracts for players over the age of 33 obviously stop me signing more 46 year old forwards <laughs> by the end of next season they want us to still be fighting against relegation and then building on that just to remain in the league of one going forwards so that's the end of season review done we are now going to jump forwards to the start of the next season where i will show you the transfers that come both in and out So we are now at the 9th of April 2023. We have completed all the business that we needed to do to be prepared for the new season, which is upon us. Let's have a little run through of the players that we have brought in and the players that have been let go. So starting at the top here, when you look at the players that were brought in, we brought in Arroyo, who is a defender left, 21 years old. We have brought in Cray. He's an attacking midfielder, right, who has good pace. Hopefully he'll be scoring quite a few goals and beating defenders using that pace. Ricky Ariane Sire, he's a midfielder left. He's brought in really to just be a squad player. Yuda Rizki Irawan, he's a central midfielder. We're going to look to utilise his passing on ball. Prestetio, he is a defensive midfielder who is quite solid in terms of his pace, his natural fitness. Is tackling is quite good with 11. Good decisions and determination there. Surayuan, 
He is a attacking midfielder left. Again, another one quite pacey, good technique. We're going to look to utilise the wings in this season using the same formation we ended the last one with. Saputro, he is a bit of a gadget player, utility player. He can play anywhere across the midfield. Adam Anis is a player who plays in the centre of the park with good passing, good first touch and good marking. Rijanto is another midfielder left. Again, a pacey player, good acceleration and agility, good technique. You're going to see a bit of a pattern forming here that we're signing players that really do fit into the way our tactic works. So we've got Darmawan, who is a centre-back. He is good at tackling, marking, good pace and acceleration, hopefully to give us a bit of cover from the balls over the top. We've got Jackson Tiwu. He's an attacking midfielder centre who plays mainly as a shadow striker, but can also play up front and in the middle of the park. Good first touch, good dribbling, quite quick as a player with good acceleration. Two, we've got Ahmed Harry is a left back, but plays as an inverted wing back, which is the position that we play in our tactic. We've got Urop Mabin. I think that's right. Urop Mabin. He's an 18-year-old. Defensive midfielder who we're going to look to develop into the role of defensive midfielder. We've got Christina Bagascara. He is a central midfielder who again has good passing, good tackling, first touch, decisions. Hopefully a player who can start to build plays from the middle of the park for us. We've got Fozan Fadri who is a 33 year old defender. Basically there as cover for the two at the back already. Rio Gunawan is a 17-year-old right-back, another one who fits in with the way that we play. He has quite good natural fitness and balance, aggression's good, positioning, tackling, work rate are all good. We've got Indra Baktihar, Indra Baktihar, who is a defender right, 18 years old, current Indonesian under-19 international Plays as a fullback, and he's probably one of the best defenders at the club. We've got M. Akil Savic, who is a 24 year old goalkeeper, coming in basically as backup. We just needed another body in the goalkeeping room, so that's that. And David Umar is a midfielder, right? He's 18 years old. Got quite good pace, jumping reach, agility, teamwork, work rate. Not the best of players, but again, he's an 18 year old who's going to come in and hopefully develop into a much better player for us. When we look at the players out, we lost Taufik Yuda, we lost Hamra Hanusa, he went out for a hundred thousand pounds. We did some really good business in terms of getting players out. Some of these offers were quite low balled, and then we managed to turn them into quite a good profit. So, Serdi Effie Fano, he's another player who's gone out. Fandy Eddy, who's a 33-year-old centre-back, who we managed to sell for £60,000. So, a little look at the finances. So, we have £142,210 in the bank, with £116,000 available in the way of transfers. We are under our wage budget quite a lot by £8,000, so there's lots of room there if we need to go and buy players to help us out in the middle of the season. When we have a look at the schedule... Our pre-season went well. We started off with two games against our youth teams and scored four goals in each of those. And then we played two local teams in Persma, which we won 4-0, and PSKT, which we also won 4-0. So in the next episode, we are going to be kicking off our second campaign in League 1. Those games are going to be against Persebaya and PSM to start off the season. So we're going to wrap this one up, jump forwards into the next episode. And you will see those first two games. So again, if you're enjoying the content, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Hit the like button also and any comments, leave them in the box down below. But until the kickoff of the brand new season, thank you very much for watching. Take care. See you soon.